Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. I'm here today with a project that is going to get my mojo going, I hope. I've had no mojo this weekend, so I've fallen back on my go-to projects when I have no mojo, which are making envelopes and making masterboards. So what I thought we could do is combine the two. And I'm going to make envelopes from masterboards. Yay! <laughs> so, we'll make a masterboard together first. Um, some of you may not have seen a masterboard before. What is a masterboard? Move these tags out of the way. It's, that's a masterboard. It's just a collage from book pages that I've done on a piece of card. I chose a piece of 160 GSM. I just chose one with slightly battered corners and mucky marks on. I don't use my nicest card to do this. I also did one on a book page. These are the tags that I've cut up from my completed couple of masterboards over at weekend. Well, I've completed two more, but I've cut two up. That one, yeah, that's the back. It was a book page. And I think I'm going to do the one today on a book page because I think that would be far better for folding to make an envelope from. Yeah, so yeah, we'll do it on a book page. So that's that. I've stuck labels on some from a kit that I got off Amazon and a lot of the Tracy Fox's latest botanical labels kit. And yeah, there you go. Not rocket science, nice and relaxing. So it's not really a tutorial today, it's more of a craft with me, isn't it? Oh, I like that one. That's my favourite. I don't know if that's going to be a journal card or a pocket yet, but I like it. Or I could make... I could make an envelope to put it in. Yeah, I could. I could. Will I remember? Right, time I get to making envelopes. Probably not. So let's move all these. These are just envelopes I've made from pretty book pages. I even put a button string closure on one. I'll, I probably won't be doing that today. So, yeah, pop those out at way. I'll show you what I've collaged with. They're just book pages. I've cut up a load of my scratty old book pages. I've got quite a few that I bought in packs, especially when I first started junk journaling before I started buying the actual books. And then there's oddments from... This is my favourite book to use, Concise British Flora. I use it for all sorts, so I end up with lots of bits left over. I think that's why I've got a fascination lately with one sheet projects so that I don't make any more scraps. I really have got enough to last me until the end of days. So that's the book. And while I'm showing you that book, I just want to show you there is another version of that book out and it's called The New Concise British Flora. It looks slightly bigger and I'll show you why. Inside there's a border around. The pages are not actually much bigger, a teeny tiny bit. Yeah. And yeah, this is the paper isn't as matte. It's not a shiny paper really, but it's like a satiny look. So I have a lot of people ask about this book, so I thought I'd just show it you. And they're under £15. In fact, I've seen a few under £10 on eBay in the UK at the minute. I can't speak for what they are in the US, but I'm sure you've got some equally gorgeous books in the US to use. I just love these and use them a lot. But you don't have to use them. Use anything you've got. You don't have to use the same supplies, especially in junk journaling. So I'll put them back to one side. And it's from that new concise British flora that I've chosen a couple of pages to collage on. Oh, there's that one. That's another botanical book I've got. And sometimes there's far too much white for me to use those. And I do collage onto them. Oh, I've got these lovely black and white pages. I was tempted to collage on one of them so that I've got that on inside. But I don't know. What's that? Oh, that's a piece of cream card. I'm not going to use that one. That's, yeah, some from the first book. I'm sure I cut it. Here we go. Come to one side, silly woman. I took some of the index pages out of the back of the new Concise British Flora. Look, can you see the difference in the pages? It's obviously a newer book. It's from the 80s. This one's from the 60s. And it's just a slightly different quality of paper. So I'm going to collage on it. Right, let's put everything else out of the way because you don't need it, woman. And let's collage on that. Stop waffling. Crack on with what you're doing. I'm going to keep that out. I think I'll keep it under that. So let's move those two out of the way. I've not put any labels on those either. 
I think I will wait until I've made the envelopes to add some labels to my collages because I don't want too many labels on the creases and the tucky any bits. Do you know what I mean? It'll just add bulk. Right, so grab your glue stick and I've got loads of bits of book page cut up ready. I've cut some of the less inspiring pages up as well. Some of them are just lots and lots of tiny little things and I thought, yeah, cut them up. There's adverts from book pages, there's bits of music paper, there's all sorts. I've got bits, oh, there were some sheets that I've got from my Your Creative Studio boxes. I've got lots of various papers. They look vintage, but they're not, so I may add some of those in. I love my dictionary and thesaurus pages. I pick those up a lot. And yeah, so I think you get an idea. Oh, I've got a few bits of ledger paper. I only had a few scraps of those. I can't cut into a sheet of ledger paper to make scraps. No, no, no. Ooh, bit of, bit of a road atlas. That's another one. That's another thing I like to buy. The, we had a little brand of um, street atlases called A to Z in UK. Do you know, I don't even know if they still make them because everything's digital now. People use sat navs, don't they? Anyway, sure up woman and collage. Right, I'm going to collage that way because I want to make a tall, thin envelope. So I've got to be a bit of <coughs> that, a bit of dictionary page. Let's grab a few bits of, uh, yeah, botanical page. I like that one. Well, I like that one. Now that's the bottom corner of a book. So if I've got one of those, I tend to put it in the bottom corner. There's more white edge. You don't have to. That's just me. I really want to stick that big advert in. How big are my pieces? Right, the size of my pieces were dictated by the size of this tub that we're hanging about empty in my craft room. I think, are these some bigger pieces? So I'll tell you. We'll measure. We'll measure. That is four and three quarter inches by three and a half. That make a nice big piece. Yeah, I'm not looking for a collage made lots of tiny bits. I'll also tell you the size of my book page, that might help. Because you could use, you could collage into the back of a digital. Or, do you know if you've printed digitals and they've not come out right? Collage on them, get them used. That's ten and three quarters by um, eight inches. So it's, yeah, it's slightly smaller than an A4 page. So you get a slightly bigger envelope if you used a full A4 page, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Right, I'm going to start, I'm going to glue that one there. I want to space out some of my botanicals and I want to get a few different colours. That looks similar to that, doesn't it? But, ooh, nice big chompy yellow piece. That looks interesting. That's a digital, I think that's a bit too dark for what I'm making today. Ooh, that's a big advert. So let's, we'll start by gluing some down. So I'm going to start this bottom right hand corner just using my glue stick. Use your preferred glue stick. I've got my glue book to hand. That's just a book I'm not going to use for anything. So I can do my gluing on. I have to have a glue book. I can't glue on what I'm doing. I watched a video from Margaret at Seven Plaza doing some collaging and she's much better at getting glue on than I am. No, I just get all stuck up. I end up not being able to use my fingers because they're stuck up that much. So I'm happy with that there. I think I want that map page up in the top corner. I just do. So don't be afraid to turn your page around while you're working. I do. Some people start from one corner and work out. I'm too, I'm too much of a flibber to gibbet for that kind of malarkey. I like to mess about a bit. You get some glue on. Someone did ask me to show them how to collage with the um, Yes paste, which I tend to use when it's hot. But to be quite honest, this year I've not done a lot of crafting when it's hot. I've not been able to take it. You just do the same. Just paint back of your pieces of paper with the Yes paste rather than your glue stick. Glue sticks can go a bit gloopy, can't they, when it's a bit warm? Whereas the Yes Paste, I think it just gets easier to use because it's a bit thinner. It comes in a big tub and it's called Yes Paste. I call it, it's like glue stick in a jar. 
I think I want another piece of botanical up in that corner. So now that glue page is done, I'm going to rip it off. These are not pages that I want to use in anything. It's a modern book. It looks old, but it's not. I use them when I'm covering them up, but instead of trying to get that off, let's turn it over and go front back. Let's turn it that way as well. Wee! Right, turn one page over. <laughs> I'm just waffling now. I can't even remember which bit I'm going to stick on. I may have even lost it. Where's it gone? It's in my book. It's there, it's there, look. It's there. Crazy lady. There we go. Yeah, I watched a few of Margaret's videos this weekend. She'd remade one of my projects. And yeah, she'd done it really nicely. The papers she used were amazing. And I found it really interesting because she'd mentioned that the papers I use, the Tim Holtz ones, are so expensive. Then she pulled out some papers that here in UK are more expensive than Tim Holtz. It just shows. So like I've said about these books I'm using, don't go paying $50 for one in US. Use something that originated in US because it's going to be cheaper. Yeah, what were the papers? Were they 49 and market she'd used? They're so expensive over here. So expensive. So I don't tend to use them. That's why. Ooh, I think I'm going to put that there. It's a dictionary page. Wee. We've got to say wee when we put glue on. There we go. So I've overlapped it a little bit because I don't want any. I've not overlapped it loads. It doesn't really matter how much you overlap it or not. And then I think I want a bit more botanical. I don't want it to look like a checkerboard, which I have got a habit of doing. Right, where do I want this? I think I want it somewhere in the middle. I'm going to put that there. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to glue them two pages together. Then you can rip them off. Then if these were pages that you liked and wanted to do something from, you'd have two pages glued together, ready to make something a bit more sturdy than you can with one book page. I hope that made sense. I got this idea off Gail Agostinelli. That's how she does her collage in. She's another one I like to watch. I've watched Gail since before I had a YouTube channel. Wee. Wee, wee, wee. So, yeah, I don't know. I had no mojo for making anything in particular. I knew I had to make some stuff. I've glued the wrong thing. I was going to put that there, weren't I? So, I'll tell you what, let's put. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to cover some of me dictionary page up i'm just putting my edges up to the edges of my paper that's why i've got this other one underneath so i'm not getting too much glue on my mat so now that's that's going to go there instead yeah there you go there you go but i'm no i'm not going to glue that down yet because i might want other things under it so what else we got i like that won't fill that hole nicely do do no, that, use that for another one. Grab some other bits, woman. Grab some other bits. I've got bits of all shapes and sizes. Oh, that's a nice bit of verbiage writing. That's Oh, that's a nice one. Pop that there. Then that could end up going a bit lower. Yeah, looks good. I think I may have got... I might, might want another bit of botanical up there. Did I have one and move it? I really don't know. I don't know. I mean, you might not want to mess about. You might be one of these who just pulls anything and glues it on. But because I'm going to use this one in one big piece, I'm a little bit more conscious of what I'm putting where. I don't like that one on there. It's a bit too dark. That one. I don't want that one. I'm looking for something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for. Maybe I need more botanical pages. I don't know if I might want to put them two big butterflies on. They'll look good, actually, won't they? They'll look good. Put them two there. Yeah. Ooh. 
let's have that with some yellow on that's nice so that's gonna go there that's gonna go there that's gonna go under that i think so yeah i'm gonna stick that one on next Eey. so i suppose it's just collage with a little bit more thought about where you place things because in my mind i've got the finished envelope we're not going to be cutting it up so much as folding and then sticking over any bits we don't like with labels if you don't like it stick a label on it there we go you can go there you will be going there i don't want anything covering that bit because i like it i really do i think i'll put that one higher up yeah and then i can put a strip or something on bottom yeah so let's stick that one on I've done them two pages it is also a good way to do your gluing so you don't end up with loads of gluey pages oh do i want that bit yeah because that's got a bit more interest on than just words so i'll glue on the word side we let's have a look what light's doing oh, we're not too bad a bit better so it's one of them days where it sun's in and out from behind clouds <clears throat> you'll not notice it because i'll have altered it after in my basic editing i had someone the other day say oh please don't start editing because we love that all your mistakes are in when i say editing it's basically joining clips together is that going here yeah that will go in here won't it it's going there so that it tucks under that so about there yeah, it's just joining clips together, slightly altering light when the sun's gone in and out. Putting a few words on. Yeah, there's no fancy. I do it on an app on my phone. It's called, is it called Video Maker? Video Maker, it's very simple. It's also very good. If any of you out there have got YouTube channels and you've ever filmed wrong way around in portrait, it will let you turn it round so that it, and then they just crop it in a bit and it'll look like you've filmed it the correct way around. Yeah, that's why I first started using it, because I lost so much footage when I first started, because I'd got camera turned the wrong way. Crazy. Crazy. Right, so that's going to go there, that's going to go there. I just, I just want a little bit of something there, and a bit of something, something down here. So we haven't got any music paper on yet, so oh, that'll be nice there, a little strip of music paper. What have we got? What have we got? I want something with a bit of interest. Something a bit more interesting. I think that's a bit white for this one. Mind you, that's white, isn't it? Yeah, that can go in there. And what else we got? Oh, a map. Another map. Oh, could do another map. Yeah, I'm going to put that little bit of map in the bottom corner. Then we're done. You can even make a collage while talking non-stop, it would, it would seem. I do it. We. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I've had a lot of fun as well cutting up these pieces and cutting up labels because I've recently had I've had two uh, subscribers who sent me Amazon gift cards. Thank you so much. You know who you are. And yeah, I've bought a few bits and bobs, and I'll show you one of bits and bobs I bought. I got this cutie, cutie patootie. Oh, look at that. How adorable is that? And how good is that for someone who likes to craft in a six inch square? It's six inches high, four wide, and it cuts very precisely. The guide is lined up just about where it cuts as well. So I find it so much easier to cut a label out with this. So that's why I've now got a huge tin full of Tracy Fox's latest botanical labels all cut it with my trimmer oh, i did have to go through and cut all little corners off by hand yeah i love it it weren't cheapest for a trimmer was it i think in us it's about 18 dollars i had to buy it from us there weren't one on amazon uk and i think with delivery it cost me about 25 pound well worth it well worth it because that is going to save me so much time so yeah that's one I'll show you another little gadget I got later. Right, sure up, woman, and get on with your crafting. Put your music paper down. I've no idea which is the right way up. Oh, I have now, because I know which way up a treble clef goes. 
Now I'm going to use my trimmer because that's got far too much white on there for my liking because these are the last few pieces getting added to my collage but I can manage to line that up with alt grids without even needing to put it butt it up against an edge look how nice that cuts Ta -da! yeah and it's got a guard on for my fingers is that going to fit oh my god I've made it a little bit too short oh it don't matter I'm, I'm just gonna it don't matter don't matter <laughs> gonna glue that bit on anyway silly woman why did you do that lady hey lady you've cut it too short it's right i went one time when i was young when i went to london i got shouted at by a load of tourists because the cross road went green man weren't on I can't remember what country they were from but the bus driver then later told me it's because they were from a country I don't know if it's the same in the US, where you're not allowed to cross when, <laughs> unless your crossing lights on. It's like, okay. And I've heard it's like they're in the US, is it? I don't know. Maybe it's just certain cities. And they're all shouting at me, hey, crazy lady, come back. Crazy lady. I'm like, what? What's up with them? All oh, cars were in a traffic jam standstill. I feel like miles down the road. They were going nowhere. I was not going to get run over. Oh, dear. But yeah, I'm a crazy lady. Anyway, I got to the shop before they did, I'll tell you. Right, where's that gap going to be? It's going to be there. There we go. Yes, yeah, so we're supposed to collage randomly, but as you can see, mine got a little bit less than random. I would not have been this faffy if I were just going to cut it up. I promise you that. And I don't suppose I needed to be that faffy because the ones I did without thinking look just as good. Right, put that there, just slide it up to the top a little bit. I'm going to pop the butterflies, I like those butterflies there. I wish I'd cut more butterflies out. I just can't be bothered to fussy cut straight away sometimes. And I've got a fussy cutting, <coughs> excuse me, folder full of butterflies that need cr closely cropping like these. Well, they're not even butterflies, they're moths. But if they've got wings like if that, they're all moth, they're all butterflies to me. And sometimes I just think it's nice. Can you see how that's straight with that? I don't know why I do that. I just do. I like it. I think it looks good on my collage. And then that's going to there. I've just spit all over that. I've got a cough sweeten. Right. Otherwise, my throat gets dry and I can't waffle like I do. To be not craft with Julie, to be croak with Julie. Wee. And this is my last piece. Oh, wow, that took far longer than it ought to have, but I enjoyed my scent. And I'm just going to, I didn't want that, so I'm just going to cover that up as well. Line that up with edge. Wee. I just, there were no need for that last way I weren't doing out. And if there's any edges sticking up, just poke a bit of art glitter glue or barely arts underneath now i love that that is still quite flexible yeah now i tend to like to put mine then under my mat to dry a little bit under my mat to flatten and then take them out to finish drying so that's going under my mat <coughs> excuse me and while i do that i'll just show you if you watched my last video where i made the accordion journal I had some fair old trouble with my Barely Arts glue. And then I watched Margaret remake it. And I thought my trouble was because I'm a nightmare from remembering to put pin back in. But Margaret is a good girl. Margaret put her pin back in. And she was still having trouble with that clogging. So I've come to conclusion it may be down to the bottle. So I've done this. Ooh, look, she like swing that about. <laughs> I've put some in one of my little bottles <clears throat> and hopefully this will answer another question for people about where to get them from. Now I got these from, they came from Amazon and the brand is Craftelia. That's a European uh, brand, Craftelia in Europe. They ship Europe wide, they do ship to UK and in fact, where are they from? Where are they based? Is that Spain? I think it's Spain. 
that's Spain. They're in Spain. I could be wrong because I can hardly see that with my eyes. Another brand I use is Crafters Companion. And yet another brand I use is Woodware and it's these. They've got the metal bottle on like the original art glitter glue bottles and they come with a pin. I just find them brilliant. I save so much glue because I'm a heavy handed person and I tend to put far too much on. So that's that. Right, I'm now going to make a cup of tea and I'll be back when that collage is dried. Two ticks. Right, I'm back. So that's been under my mat. It's dried quite a bit it's nice and flat i'm just going to let it finish drying off and we'll make an envelope from one of the score uh, masterboards i'd already done so i've got my scoreboard out move that envelope out your hand woman let's move the glue book because we don't really need that anymore do we we've used that so scoreboard out and bring i'll bring in one of my other masterboards now this is pretty thick but what I want to do is I want to make a squat little, uh, yeah, I want to make a squat little envelope. Let me show you this. I made that from a sheet of A4. So we're going to get an envelope slightly smaller than that. So let's measure our paper. The paper measures 11 and a half inches just over. So what I'm going to do is I'll make an envelope that's five inches wide. And I'm going to do that by scoring at five inches all the way down and then I'm going to score at ten inches all the way down I could make it wider but you know I could have made it a lot wider than that yeah with this being thick I wanted to score it I'll show you what I would have done had it been thinner if it had been a thinner piece of paper I would have just folded it over like so leaving enough there I would have creased that and then I would have done that so that I could glue that to there then I'd make a top flap and a bottom flap so I would have got a wider envelope I think I've yeah I've I've done myself a disservice there I've left that far wide far the envelope far narrower than it could be anyway the next thing I will do is I will turn it around <laughs> And I'm going to score at one and a quarter inches all the way down. And I'm going to score at one and a quarter inches from the top. And because I can't work that out, I'm just going to flip that round and score one and a quarter. I've done lots of envelopes like this before. So, move that. So I scored it at five inches, ten inches. And then I've scored at one and a quarter from the top and one and a quarter from the bottom. If I turn it over, you'll see it score lines a little bit better. Right, so -ho. get your scissors, woman. I'm going to do a bit of folding before I get my scissors. Then it reminds me which bits to cut and which not. So that's that. I'm going to fold that bit in. So that's going to be my envelope. Yeah, it's. I've got a little bit of cracking on edges because this was a very thick piece of card I've used. I just wanted to do it. I wanted to. So I'm going to use that bit for my flap. So I'm going to come in and cut these corners off. The side ones I'm going to cut at an angle. The top ones I'm going to cut just inside the score line. I don't like to pull them off. I like to snip them. Because then they're less likely to rip. So I'm going to do that there. Inside your score line, woman. You just said it and then you did wrong. You tried to do it different. And it's not a do as I say and not as I do situation because I want to do this right. Then this one I want to cut just again inside the score line. I'm sorry if you can't see score lines. I didn't think this one through. I just decided to come on and mech it. I've not got a prototype. It was like, hmm. Let's just combine your two Mojoless projects. So let's snippity snip. So we're now at that point. That's going to be the top flap on my envelope. <clears throat> I could have cut a bit of that off actually. Do you know what? I'm going to grab my little scoreboard and cut some of that off. Won't, it won't fit in my teeny one. Oh no. So get your next size up. It's like 
It's going to be the chopper family, isn't it? I'm just going to cut a bit of that off because I don't want to waste it. I'm going to leave it at maybe three quarters of an inch. Yeah, there we go. Because I can make some labels and stuff out of that now. Oh, I could make the... Uh, I could, yeah, oh, no. You're going to make them out of this. If I want to make a button string closure, I can use these bits. So all these bits you're cutting off corners can be used. So... I now need to get rid of this corner. So as I've said before with these, you're basically getting rid of all your four corners. So cut just inside. Use your short scissors, woman. You don't need long ones to cut that far, do you? Just inside score line. And I'm going to cut this side one at a slight angle. Then it hides better when you glue. When you glue that on top of it, it hides. It can't stick out top or bottom. Then I want to cut this bit off. So again, I'm going to cut just inside this score line. I mean, I've done this on video before. It's not, it is not rocket science, this one. Oh, some of you might not have seen it. We're doing it from something I've never done it from before. This actually would make a really good postal envelope. You know, if you were selling little bits on i mean i've had think bought things off etsy before and they've come in got the most gorgeous envelopes that i've saved this could be one of those gorgeous envelopes so that will glue to there we will then tuck that up tuck that down yeah i've got a little bit can you see that needs a little bit of a trim because i folded it just on the edge of two bits of paper We've had a teeny tiny bit of cracking, but you never know whether it's going to crack when you've collaged old book pages, do you? But again, I think that just all adds to it. Let's come in and ink it and see where it looks like inked. I'm just going to ink up my edges. Oh, that were a big dip in your ink woman, wasn't it? This new ink pad's been new now for months, but it's still very juicy. Sorry if I'm flipping a lot. I just wanted to ink up edges. Yeah, I like that. Looks good. Right, these, I'm going to round them. I'm going to grab my corner rounder. You could do it by hand. Or I'm going to do it with my corner rounder. I think I'll give it a... Cover your ink up for now. I'll give it a big one. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go again. Now I think this one definitely does need to be a button string closure because it's such a chompy envelope. That's a bit... Yeah. Sometimes, because I've got all that there, you can't get the corner rounder in. I've, I've left a little bit of that seam on. So I'm just tidying that up a bit with my scissors. I mean, if you don't have a corner rounder, just do it with your scissors. Do it with your scissors. It all depends on your level of perfection that you want, doesn't it? And mine changes on a daily basis. Right, I'm going to ink the other bits now. Quick inking. It's always going to be inking for Phyllis now. Do you know something? I am astounded at the amount of Phyllises that watch my channel. It's mad. So hello to all the Phyllises out there. Because I did a... <laughs> I'd had one of my... Subscribers called Phyllis said that she really loves to watch people ink and most people miss it out on a recent video. So I'd said I'm going to do all the inking on this video just for Phyllis. And I've had so many people commenting saying I'm not the inking Phyllis, but... And then comment, so hello, Phyllises. Was it Phyllis I? I don't know. You're not cactuses, are you? It's not cactus or cacti. So I don't think it's Phyllis or Phyllis I. I don't know. Sure up now, woman, you're talking absolute bobbins. Right, there we go. I think I want a cut. Ooh, I've started using this. Yeah, thanks, uh, Margaret. This was another gadget I spent my money on. I watched uh, Margaret again do a collage with hexagons, and I thought, that's it, you need a hexagonal punch. But I've not used it for collage yet, but I'm loving using it for that you know your notches looks a bit different to a semicircle yeah so again that's just not something you need is it i've got far more gadgets and stuff since i started doing youtube and that is from the kindness of the people who watch me 
right so I'm going to glue that to there and that to there and then I think I might do a button string closure on that should we do a quick button string closure I've got my punches to hand from having done one let me grab her she says she has but then I might put it away I've got my one inch punch hanging about it'd be lost on my desk here it is it's hiding but it's there yeah let's do a quick button string closure so I'm going to use these that I cut off. Oh, they'll be lovely in flowers. Look at that. So I'm going to do a one in, two one-inch circles. They are beautiful. How are they going to look? Because I didn't have flowers on them bits. Oh, that's going to be fabulous. Yay. I'm going to ink them up. Now, the easiest way to do the button string closure is to poke holes and stick a brad through. Or you can do them with eyelets. I've done loads on the channel before. People probably think, is she doing another button string closure? Yeah, I am because I love them. And they all go in different journals. Oh, that's going to look fabulous. Me like it. So I'm going to grab my hole punch. I like to do my holes after. I just do. It works better for me. Lots of reasons why. Where's your crocodile woman? <clears throat> there it is. So, punch your hole. I literally do get them near at middle like this than when I punch a tiny hole and do the big hole punch around it. I do, I don't know why. I'm just, just be rubbish at doing it other way. But hey ho. So now I want to punch a hole here. Here we go. I like to put my circles on and then do that. Don't ask me why I'm using my fabric pen, probably because kids have nicked all others. Hmm, thanks kiddies. Then you can put your other one as far down as you want. I think I'm going to do it there. I've no idea if that's in the middle. It's not something I like to get very precise about these days. That's not going to reach, is it? So you've got options then. You, you can either poke it through with a hole if you're going to use brads. Let's use brads. Oh, what we got here? Ooh, what we got there? I'll use a brad rather than an eyelet on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I've really got a froggy throat. Shall I use one of these? Oh, yeah. It's not going to work, is it? You've punched big holes. You need your big brads, woman. If if I had brains, two ticks while I find some. I can't find any big brads to save my life, so I'm going to do it with eyelets. So I've got this big chompy thing out. that is vastly underused. Right, so I've marked the holes where my buttons want to go. And they're disappearing because I've used disappearing fabric marker, you silly woman. Oh dear, so I'm using, it's the crocodile too, the big chompy one. So I want the big hole. Yes, I'll do the other envelope with brads, with small brads, because I will not punch big holes. It's going to be hard to use small brads with big holes. So that's that hole. And then we need to do that hole. Yeah, it just gives you that longer reach, these, this. There's lots of other ways to make holes without getting one of them things. To be honest, the only time I ever use that is when my hole wants to be further than a one and a one and a is it one and an eighth inch down? It'll go with other one. I don't know whatever it is. It's the only time I use it, and it's a very expensive tool for that one thing. I used it an awful lot when I made um, mini albums with chipboard covers and put the holes in them. Yeah, I did. Don't tend to use it so much these days, but I use it because I've got it. I do. Right, let's pick a colour of, I think I want to use, I don't know, let's use what I've got loads of. I've got loads of that colour, so we're using that colour. I did buy some more bronze ones. No, I'll use bronze ones. Oh, I'll never kill myself making a decision. Just changed my mind there. But that just shows you how much it matters. <laughs> that just shows you how much the colour you use matters, not a jot. So I just changed my mind. So let's pop that in. And I might as well set this one with my little one, which I find much easier to use, to be honest. 
There you go. And then I'm going to have to bring a big one out to set this on and I've just put it on the floor out of the way. I bet there were people shouting at me, don't put that away, woman. You're going to need it. I know you've all been coming out of woodwork letting me know you're shouting at me to put my pen in my glow. I may remember one day. I just find this so much trickier because the, the pokey bit comes from top. What, what's oh my god i've still got it set on holes that's another reason i don't like this i put holes in things that don't belong try not to talk when you use it yeah you're not you're not, you're not supposed to operate operate every machinery or drive when you're on certain medications well waffling do there should be a warning on waffling do not talk or operate every machinery when waffling too much Right, I'm just going to trim this bottom down a bit because I felt a bit of resistance there from that folding up. Yeah, that's better. Right, now I've got those on, I can do a bit of glue in. I'm going to use my Barely Arts glue and I'm going to put a line of it down the inside of that little flap and the outside of my big flap. Then I've got two lines and if you're at all concerned that they're going to stick together when you put them in, this is my label backing sheet, I pop that there. I tried to show you this recently and I couldn't find any label backing sheet. There you go. So if any glue squidges out then on the inside it will go onto this and it won't glue your two pieces together that don't need gluing together. I hope that makes sense. I also feel I'm struggling to speak. I can waffle, but speaking is very difficult. Right, then that's drying nicely. I'm just going to lift that up a bit and I'm going to glue that one. This is a, such a sturdy envelope. This would be brilliant to go with a journal to put ephemera in. It would. Now I'm going to glue around the edges. We, this is a bigger hole than some precision ones I've had. This Craft Elia brand. Or maybe uh, maybe it barely arts glue is a bit thinner. I don't really know. I'm still not having trouble. Have I put my pin in? Have I heck? I've even made myself a new glue dangle. Yeah, an earring back, a bulb clip and any old charm. Right, so that's that. That's that. Right, I'll suffer the consequences. Can you see? I had a tiny bit of squidge, squidgeage at the top, but no more. And then I'm going to come in with some string. I'll do my new fancy knot, a slip knot, if you know what one of them is. I'm basically tying the knot on that piece so the other piece will slip through. Can you see? So now I've got that. Wee. So I'm going to put that round my button, tighten it up, oh, just snip that extra end off you don't need woman. What are you doing? You're acting like a woman with no arms. There we go. And tighten that up. Loving that. Wee. And then I can fasten that round. I think we'll go for one more time round, snip it about there and we're done. How cute is that? I do love that but it's really really naked isn't it? Yeah can you see that's cracked? I would say mm, I think what I'm gonna do because I know I've got cardstock under these I'm gonna snip them cracky bits off an income still looks good though i don't mind a bit of that me on edge we know it's not going to rip and fall off it's what we've covered it with that's cracked not the underlying cardstock but that's looking a bit naked so it needs a few labels sticking on it so let's get my tracy fox labels out i'm loving this latest set i've, I've got to stick them on everything and when i've collaged i like to stick a label on joins I don't want that botanical one there because that's a big picture. I want one with a bit more wordage. Some of these have wordage. Some That's another set. I can't remember the name of it. I've mixed it in with my botanical ones. 
Oh, that's a giant. I like the giant butterfly. We'll put you there, mate. I think I'll put you on because you're printed on slightly thicker cardstock. I will put you on with my art glitter glue or even my barely art. So what an ever on earth glue it is. Flower and water? No. Yeah, we're gonna pop. I'm gonna put you over to one side. Put you up against that flower. Yeah, I like that there. Then I'm gonna grab a set of the wordy labels. Wordy labels. Where's my wordy labels gone? There we go. That, again, that's another Tracy Fox set because I'm just loving Tracy Fox labels at the minute. I do. The other labels are available. I've got a list in the description of my favourite labels. They're good if you're doing cards, save the date, special day. I don't want to put that on here. Specimen collection. No, I want some thicker and chompier and thinner. Less chompy, should I say, not chompier. Ooh, what's that one? I like that. That's going to go on. Yeah. I'm going to ink the edge of that one because it's black and you can see a little bit of white around it where I've trimmed it. Whee. There we go. I like that there. And if you want to stick a number on it, stick a number on it. That'll do. And I think we need an, uh, another label on the front. I'm liking that red one. I don't know. I don't know. I just like the front as it is. I don't know whether it needs a big label. Maybe a little one at the bottom. Yeah, maybe that's all. Yeah, I'm going to put it there. I like that. Again, not inking. I've been much careful of cutting these because I've done them with my trimmer. So I don't feel the need to ink on the edge of every one. That's, I think that's done. You can over egg the pudding, can't you? I don't think I need anything anywhere else. I could put I could put something there, but I'll decide on that when it goes where it's going. Yeah. Right, so that's them done. So we've done a collage masterboard and made one envelope and it's nearly took us an hour. <laughs> so that's that one. Right, let me bring the masterboard back that we made together. Right, now this one is going to be much easier. I am not going to use my... Uh, don't put your pin it wrong glue, my sis. I'm going to grab my little scoreboard for this. There we go. Right. Grab my favourite scoring tool, wherever it may be. Oh, I'll use this one because it's two hand. I don't know what I've done with a metal one. I've had it on my desk. It's got buried over weekend. Right, so this is going to be a tall, slim envelope. So I'm just going to score. I think I'm going to score at... Yeah, I'm going to score at one and... I'm going to go one and a half on this one so it's not as tall. Score at one and a half from the top and one and a half from the bottom. Now score that in whatever method you like for scoring. Ooh, that's gone just below butterflies that were quite handy that can you see mm. hot moths right for the width of this i'm going to do exactly what i showed you before i'm going to fold it over to about there yeah that looks good i'm lining up my top edge and my bottom edge and then i'm going to crease it if you want to use a scoreboard go ahead and use a scoreboard I'm uh, over measuring these days. We've had a little bit of cracking again. Yeah, that's just going to be an issue, isn't it, when I'm using old book pages. The newer book pages haven't cracked. Can you see it's the older ones? Yeah, because they're a little bit more fragile. So I'll just trim them bits off. You can always run a bit of glue on if you want. And then I'm going to fold this edge up using that edge I've just folded over as my guide does away with need for a scoreboard although as one of my subscribers did say today they're not that expensive and they're so useful and I've got to agree I've really I've got to agree if I had no money to spend on crafts whatsoever 
and I was just saving a little bit, I think a scoreboard trimmer are my first tools I would buy because they can make your life so much easier. Right, so what we're following so far, I've basically just done those two folds without the scoreboard. So that's going to be the back of my envelope. I'm loving this envelope already. And I'm going to come in and remove all four corners. This time, this corner is rather small. I think I can see its score lines better this side. Cut just inside the score line. So I'm not going to go as slow on this one because we've just made one. Angle that little piece there. Cut just inside the score line there. Then angle that little piece there. And then cut just inside the score line. The centre bit's going to be your flap. Again there. Oops, stop folding back you silly thing. And then down at bottom, cut just inside that score line. And then we're going to remove those two corner pieces. So at the bottom, I can come in and remove a little bit more. That'll make sure everything folds up nicely because we're not going to see that bottom line. With my top one, I want to be a little bit more precise because that's going to be the inside edge of my... Can you see there? I'm going to do it now. I need a teeny tiny bit of glue because the corner of that has not stuck down brilliantly and that's going to be a part of my envelope. It's going to be there, isn't it? When I've made them out of book papers, actually, I've not cut that bit off. I've glued it there to strengthen it, but it would be too bulky. When I'm doing it from a single book page, you can do that. So I'm going to cut just inside my score line, which happens to be just up to the edge of that butterfly. I couldn't have placed that any better. Just going to snip that with scissors. It's the other side that needs a bit snipped off. There we go. And I'm going to come in. And angle that. I'm going to use my hexagonal punch again because I'm just loving that look lately. There we go. I'll ink this project after because I think you've seen enough inking today, Phyllis. So before we glue the side, I'm going to make my button string closures. We've got lots of spare bits. Uh, what they're going to look like made out of music paper. Oh, I think they'll look good. Yeah. Oh, that poor butterfly is going to get uh, covered up. So I'm just going to punch two circles. One inch circles. That's the size I like to use. I will ink these now because I, you can ink edges after. I've showed methods of doing that before. But a, a circle, no, that wouldn't be so easy. If they don't feel thick enough, you can always back them with another circle of card. I think these will be fine because we're going to use a small brad to attach these. Grab your purple pen, woman. I cut, When there's something on the back, I find it very difficult to decide where the middle is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a circle from something else. Watch this not cut. Oh, it did. I'm surprised. Didn't cut right well, but it cut. You'd have been better grabbing a piece of card, wouldn't you, Julie? Yes, you would, Julie. And I'm going to mark my middle on that. And I'll punch these both at the same time. There we go. I think we can both, all, both see, there's only two of us. We can all see that's not quite the middle, so I'm going to go just short of it. Yay, they're just about middle. I'm happy with that. So that's my button strings done. I'll now decide where they're going to go on here. I'll put that one just under the bottom of the butterfly. Moth, whatever it is. Mark that. And mark that. Now this time you can do it without even needing any kind of hole punch. You can just use a pokey tool. 
do I have a pokey tool? I very rarely use a pokey tool. I've replaced um, all the things I do with a pokey tool with tools over the years. Have we got a pokey tool in here? No, they're into pokey tool. They're just lots of... Oh, that's tiny, isn't it? That might do it. Yeah, because you can replace these, you see. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to put my teeniest, tiniest one in this end. A lot of people ask where I got this from. I got it from Amazon. As, as I always say, I get most of my stuff from Amazon. Unless it's cheaper anywhere else. I'm a bit of a, oh, I want it and I want it now. So I don't, and then I don't want to have to spend a lot more money to get up to minimum amount to get free delivery. Because I do love my free delivery. So that's another reason I get a lot of stuff off Amazon. Right. I don't, that just seems shorter. I don't know why. So, got that done. I'm going to grab a piece of foam. Grab a piece of foam, she says. Where's all your foam gone, woman? Here we go. And I'm going to poke my little pokey tool through there. Poke and twist to make the hole bigger. Poke and twist. Oh, we need to round these corners as well. I'll round my corners. One. Two. So, yeah, you, you know what I do when I've got no mojo. I make envelopes. <laughs> Masterboards, I, I do. I always like to have a few envelopes and masterboards to hand. So that's that, that's that. Grab your little brads that you had before now, woman. What colour shall we use? What colour indeed? I think I'm going to go for the antique one. Because they are vintage botanical journals they're going in. And I'm going to pop that brad through. Pop it through the hole which I've lost. Where's the hole? Oh my god. There it is. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong place. Open the legs. I think you need better glasses to see legs on that brad, missus. I don't want it too tight. But what I am going to do as well there just so that things aren't going to catch on that brad. I like to just put a piece of paper on. So I'm going to grab one of my scraps from around desk. Do I have a scrap that's just paper? Or is everything part of a collage masterboard these days? Everything's part of a collage masterboard. Where's all your scraps, woman? Let's go in. I'm going to go in rubbish box. What we're going in rubbish box? Oh, that were a label I decided I didn't like. It's not that I didn't like the label. I didn't like the thought of cutting it out. Hey ho, sorry. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut. It's an hexagon because that's the punch I had to hand. No reason other than that. And I'm just going to glue around them edges. And I'm just going to pop that on. I like to cover my brad legs up on inside. And I use a big piece because if you use a piece that's too small, the edges on the paper don't want to glue down. Can you see how it goes? Now, if I were making this uh, for myself, I'd wait until that were all dry before gluing this, but we're doing it on camera. So um, a bead of glue down that edge. And a bead of glue down that edge. Oh, that went a bit one kit bottom, didn't it? And there we go. Then we're going to glue the bottom up. Woohee! Right, I'm just there we go. I'm just going to put that on there. <laughs> I didn't need to put it down with such force. There we go, just to hold that down while I get my string and tie my little knot. Oh, we've not put top brad in. Put top brad in, my sis. The 
there you go. That was that were long enough to make that all down anyway. Put your top brad in, woman. Fiddly things. And this one, cover it or not cover it. That is the question. Cover it if you want to cover it. Don't if you're like me and can't really be bothered. I'm just going to trim that cracked paper off again. There we go. I'm going to do my little slip knot. Yeah, we used to do these at school. Whee. There we go. Snip that bit off. I need that long bit for my big chumpy fingers to tighten up. It's, it's essential wastage. And hold your button while you tighten that, then it won't pull your thing off. There we go. Round a couple of times. And there we go. Snip it off. Let's pop that away. I've done my party trick again. I've lost the first envelope that I made while making the second one. So oh, here it is, found it. So that's that. Now I've got to decide, do I want to put any labels on that? Do you know what? I don't even know that I do. Go on then, put one on. <laughs> I don't know if I want to put a label on. Oh, go on, stick one on, she says. Do I want that? I wish I'd thought on and put the moth a bit further down so that we saw the whole of it. I'm just a little bit sad about my moth. But I'll get over it. Oh, got a dragonfly there. Oh, that looks nice. I think I want something there. What about... Oh, I like that there. I don't know. I don't want to cover any of that up. Mm, might have to put that on the other side. I think that needs something small with wordage. Small and wordy. What we got? What we got? Sample. No, don't like that. What about in red? I think I like it better in red. Yes, I do. What else we got? Oh, we've got a oval label there. I like that. Sample number. That looks better. Yeah. I'm not feeling that dragonfly anymore yet, but I think he needs to go there. Yeah, I like him there. Yeah. So I didn't put pin in my glue. <laughs> but there, as you can see, it's not dried up in that amount of time. So yeah, I'm blaming bottle for not being able to leave glue out for like three seconds flat. I don't know if I want that up there. I think I want it there. Yeah, I don't want one up there. I've changed my mind. It's a woman's prerogative to change your mind, isn't it? I want that one there. So, you may have thought different, but... Hey ho. I don't know, I think with that round button being there, having that label there, it just made it look odd. But I do want that there. And I think that's it because, yeah, a little bit more thought into where to place my collage papers has made this. I think it's made the need for labels a little bit redundant, hasn't it? Specimen collection. I think we could have that there though. Because if I uh, send this out in Happy Mail, people are going to see both sides. There we go. I like that. Just got a little bit more crack in there. Just trim it off. I suppose you could sand it. Yeah, you could sand it off. But I like that. So we've got two policy envelopes made... How long did it take me? Yeah, just over an hour to do a master board. Waffle an awful lot and make two yummy envelopes. So I've got one each there for my journals. 
So I can either put them in the journal or just use them to put extra ephemera in. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll link some other videos where I've made different types of envelopes using various gadgets. I've made some using no gadgets. And yeah, everything I've used in the video will be linked in my description. If you're looking at your video on a computer, underneath where it, it tell you the title of the video, there'll be perhaps a few hashtags and then there'll be the word more or a little arrow. Press on that and it will bring up the rest of the description. And if it says more again at the bottom, keep clicking on more till you've got the whole of the description up and all my links will be in there. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.